Welcome to the Finding Dad Bod, where my dad, Coach Alex Van Houten, plus his 14 years of experience to work for you. You should listen to him. Here's Pity Beast Mode. Who knows who we could be if we could become 1% better every single day. What's up, guys? This is Alex Van Houten with Defunding Dad Bod. I hope you're doing super well. You are listening to Season 3, Episode 39 of Defunding Dad Bod, where we're talking about integrating your exercise and nutrition practice to improve your quality and quantity of life. This episode is brought to you by Better Daily. Work hard to become 1% better every single day, but don't do it alone. Go to definingdadbod.com slash betterdaily to join the community and get support for your betterment journey. We just released our April calendar for Better Daily, and you should take a look at it. We've got some awesome stuff coming up, including group coaching sessions, a workshop on fasting, the Faithful 40 Challenge Summer Shred Edition, and a lot more. You can find the link to the April calendar below and the link to definingdadbod.com slash betterdaily. We'd love to have you in there. We've got an awesome show for you today. But before we get there, here's your food for thought. I just finished my first professional-grade photo shoot for Defining Dad Bod. I know, I know, it's about time. I've been running this business for three years, and I just now got to pose in front of a camera. Fun fact, drumming up business around Defining Dad Bod was not actually the impetus for the photo shoot. You see, I have a buddy of mine who's a photographer that's looking to expand his portfolio. And he said, hey, you're a pretty fit dude. How about I do some pictures for your business, and it'll help me get the experience I need under my belt as well. Now, what does this have to do with your food for thought? Well, it's a good thing he's a buddy of mine, because the whole process took about three hours to get three decent shots. Because it turns out there's a difference between normal lighting and studio lighting. There's also a difference between moving for the camera and moving for function, and getting the shoulders to look just right, and getting the abs to look just right, and getting the angle of the face just right. I've got to tell you, it was exhausting. And so my food for thought for you today is this. We live in a world where we look at Instagram, billboards, commercials. We see perfectly lighted bodies, cinematography, and photoshopped images of what a healthy body is supposed to look like. And then, walking by our bathroom mirror in the morning, we look at our reflection and we measure ourselves against those standards. What would happen if instead of envisioning a perfectly photographed human body that's probably genetically gifted and a bit starved, You change the ideal vision of who you could be into something that more closely reflects your real life. It's one thing to have an ideal to shoot for. It's another thing entirely to compare how you appear in your bathroom mirror to how somebody else appears after three hours of photography and professional lighting to get that one snapshot that looks just right. While I've been preaching this for a long time, being on the other side of it, the guy who's actually getting pictures taken of him, and seeing everything that goes in to making that picture look just right, I'm here to tell you that that picture of me is going to turn out way better than I look on a day-to-day basis, and I consider myself a pretty fit guy. Don't compare the two. I won't be comparing myself to that guy, and I hope you don't either. In fact, while I'll appreciate having those pictures, they're way less of a reflection of who I am in my day-to-day life than a good action shot of me playing with my boys. What false pictures have you been holding in your mind, and how can you replace those with something that's better for you? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Shoot me a message at Coach Al at DefiningDadBot.com. That's your food for thought today. I hope it gives you something to munch on. Now, without further ado, let's talk about integrating your exercise and nutrition practice into a higher quality and quantity life. I've asked several men's groups online to list out their core values, and while that opens the door to many awesome words like courage, honor, service, love, family, faith, there's one word that nearly every man lists as part of their core value structure, and that is integrity. And today I want to talk to you about improving your integrity by making your health and fitness practice a part of it. First, what is integrity? Integrity has a Latin etymology coming from the word integer. An integer is a number that's whole in and of itself, where none of its parts are missing. How does something with many parts become something of high integrity? It does so by becoming integrated, and that's the core of our conversation today. You see, in my line of work, 
I get the opportunity to talk to many people from many walks of life, but given the demographic of my business, many of those people are parents, and they're doing their best on a day-to-day -day basis to keep the kids fed somewhat healthfully, to get to bed at a decent time, to maintain a productive presence in their workspace, to manage their finances well, and to make memories with their families. Often, by the time they get to the other end of the phone in a consultation with me as a coach, they're saying things like, my life is just so busy. I have a lot of things going on. I have no time for me, and I know it's taking a toll. I got a bad blood test back from the doctor. I stepped on the scale for the first time in a long time. None of my clothes are fitting anymore, and I don't even recognize myself in the mirror. They come to me saying that they have a weight loss goal, or if they're really sophisticated, a fat loss goal with a little bit of muscle gain on the side. But what I hear is that while they're working hard, diligently trying to make all the pieces of their life work well, they have yet to integrate their health and fitness practice into their daily life. I don't want to be esoteric here, and speaking about values can oftentimes seem impractical. But here's an example I think you can resonate with. I'm working with a client right now that I've worked with for almost two years. The guy's done an amazing job in the past two years, dropping about six inches off his waist, losing about 30 pounds, and getting in more athletic shape for himself. Something crazy happened back in October, where he and his wife for the first time in almost 20 years, got to have an actual week-long vacation. And leading up to it, he was more motivated than ever. He was eating extremely clean. He had great parameters around his work. He didn't miss a single workout. And he got to go to the beach with his wife and have an absolute blast. But something strange happened when they got back from the beach. The holidays got underway. Work got a little more stressful and intense. And much of his nutrition motivation and his exercise discipline fell by the wayside where the man went 60 entire days without missing one workout assignment. He followed up those 60 days by only getting four workouts in the next 60 days. That's a huge problem, because when you add an abundance of holiday stress, treats, and travel, on top of a body and mind that's used to exercising regularly, but all of a sudden doesn't get to, and then add on top of that the possible biological interaction of wintertime circadian rhythms and fat gain, and despite my pings and my encouragement, my client successfully undid his weight loss progress over a period of five months. We got on the phone the other day, and he was finally fed up with himself. But his words, not mine, were, Alex, I can't do any more arbitrary goals. I set them, I achieve them, and then they're not enough, and I backslide. So I asked him to draw me a picture of his perfect day five years from now. He was like, what the heck does that have to do with my weight loss goals, Alex? I said, never mind that, just do it. So he did. And the picture was excellent. It had a great vision for his family in the future. Had a great vision for himself and his wife. And I said, is that an arbitrary goal? Or is that really what you want for yourself and your family? And he said, that's about as true as it gets, man. And then I told him, look, what I've learned about you in the past year and a half is if you're extremely motivated, you can do literally anything. But here's the thing about your health and fitness journey. Motivation is temporary. It has to be integrated into the big picture of what you want for yourself and your family. And if your nutrition, if your exercise, if your activities that manifest the best in your genetic potential are not actively a part of that vision, then you'll never make meaningful, sustainable progress in this area. And you'll keep going up and down and up and down until you finally give up altogether. And that spurred a powerful conversation about what nutrition practices it was that he's experimented with over the past two years that have worked well for him and that are sustainable for him, as well as how he can better integrate the practice of exercise in his life, so that instead of constantly feeling like his choice to exercise is simultaneously sacrificing some of the things that he'd like to spend time doing with his family, it's actually a part of bringing about that five-year vision. Now, this story might resonate with you, and it might not, but the point is this. Integrity is a value that implies the integration, the wholeness, the bringing together of all the parts of your life, not just the short-term stuff, but the long-term stuff, so that the time that you spend doing things in a day are woven synergistically together to make the most of you on a day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year basis. And while this sort of mindset approach is not something you're going to read about in the current health and fitness literature, it is something that I find in my practice on a regular basis makes the difference between people who experience real transformation and people who regularly jump on a bandwagon only to fall off again. Now, I don't want to cover this topic without being practical to you in your life, and so I have five suggestions 
from the conversations that I've had with different clients on this topic to help you create and restore integrity in your health and fitness practice. So here we go. The first thing you need to do in order to integrate health and fitness practice into your daily life is be honest with the time that you're spending on things. The primary obstacle that people have to eating more healthfully, to exercising more regularly, or investing in things like sleep, relationships, and even a positive spiritual practice is time. Oh, Alex, I would work out every day, you know, but it's just so hard. I don't have the time. Here's the thing. I've said it in the past, and I'll say it again. Every single one of us has the same 24 hours in a day. How you spend yours is an investment in what you believe matters. Spending time with your kids, spending time in your workplace, spending time developing relationships with family and friends are all powerful and productive ways to invest your time. But oftentimes, as many great, noble, and high-integrity things that there are to be using your time for, if you are really honest with yourself, not every second of your day is spent doing things of ultimate importance to you. How many hours do you spend in entertainment, like scrolling through social media, watching People Are Awesome episodes, or imbibing sporting events? Not to say that we shouldn't have some time every now and then to unwind, but chances are, if you're honest with yourself, between screen time and quote-unquote relaxation, there's more than enough time in your day to spend 20 to 40 extra minutes eating well and exercising. The first thing you need to do, if you believe that there is room for improvement to integrate health and fitness in your life, is to be honest with your time. Ask yourself if there are things that are in your schedule right now on a daily basis that are of high enough priority to you that you should continue to do those things rather than exercising and eating well. It is a very rare person that I run into on a regular basis who quite literally from the time they wake up to the time they go to bed are engaged minute to minute in meaningful, sustainable work without excess wastes of time. Let's get honest about it, let's identify those issues, and let's make a health and fitness swap. The number two thing you can do to integrate your health and fitness practice into your daily life is to draw a distinction between your default and celebration. One of the things that comes up when I work with clients, especially in the weight loss world, is a mindset of scarcity. Well, wait a second, Alex. If I'm eating healthy and exercising, does that mean I never get to celebrate my birthday ever again? No. First of all, that's ridiculous. Second of all, that's not the way I go about things in my life or the way that I coach my clients. But let's get honest about what celebration actually is. You see, what we do in health and fitness, what we become over time, is a result of our default. The things that we do day in and day out, 90% of the time, where celebration, on the other hand, is kind of a minute thing by nature. I mean, if everything in life is a celebration, then nothing really is, right? Kind of reminds me of the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland. A very merry unbirthday to you. You have one birthday and 364 unbirthdays in a year, so why not party every day of the year? That is actually the mental shift that happens in many people who have a scarcity mindset. Okay, I'll eat well, I'll exercise regularly, but my kid made an A on his paper, so let's go out for ice cream. And it's so-and-so's anniversary, let's go over there and eat steak and cake. Oh, my team won again. How about a six-pack? Here's the deal. As long as you view your health and fitness practice as deprivation as opposed to a default, then you're going to find intricate, fun, mentally manipulative ways to bypass the system and work against your own rules. Remember my client? drawing a picture of his five-year future, the body that he drew in that picture is the result over the next five years of what he spends 90% of his time doing. If six out of seven days a week, he's eating adequate amounts of protein, not overdoing it on fat and processed carbohydrates, and getting two to four hours of exercise at least in weekly, then barring some unforeseen catastrophe, my client's health and fitness practice will not be an obstacle to that vision. Similarly, it's important that you identify in your life opportunities to improve your default and to distinguish your default from celebration. There's no reason to deprive yourself of things worth celebrating. It could be argued that some of those things are what make life worth living. But if your health and fitness is unintegrated and you're going about this nutrition and exercise thing with a scarcity mindset, then you're setting yourself up for failure because you'll find a way out of tyrannizing yourself. And that way often comes by blurring the line of celebration. The number three thing you can do to integrate your health and fitness practice into your daily life is to work to improve slowly because overhauls don't work. If you haven't caught on by now, one of my guiding principles in the health and fitness industry has been positive, incremental progress over time, or put in another way, 1% better every single day. 
While that progress might sound painful and slow to somebody who looks in the mirror and wants to see things change overnight, I will tell you that from a physical perspective, that's really the only way to do things. Biological adaptation is hard. If you want to tell your body that it's healthy for you to have 20 pounds less fat on you than you have right now, and that dropping those fat pounds won't put you in some kind of mortal danger, then I have news for you. You better be in it for the long haul. While bodybuilders and physique competitors have been doing crash deficit diets since 50 years ago to appear awesome on stage, I promise you that those results are not sustainable. But no matter how many times I warn people, or no matter how many times they try it for themselves and see it fail over and over again in their lives, for some reason the message just doesn't seem to stick. Here's a fun approach to weight loss. You want to lose weight? How about you stop eating until you're the weight you'd like to be? Oh wait, do you see the problem there? Your body is a complex biological organism. Whatever changes that you ask your body to make has to, from a biological perspective, work well for you now and in the future. And it has to do so in a way that your biological process can depend on. I've covered the science elsewhere in this show, but suffice it to say that overhauls don't work at a biological level. And even more so, they don't work at a social or psychological level either. If you change everything about how you eat right now, and you change everything about how you exercise right now, how do you think your spouse will respond to that? How do you think your kids and work will respond to that? How do you think you will respond to that? Over a short period of time, anybody can deal with anything. But over the long haul, if you haven't made changes slowly, with positive incremental progress, then it's very likely that every single one of those changes will cease to be here a year from now. I believe there are a few exceptions. And while those exceptions are fascinating, I don't think they're very helpful when it comes to making good rules. If you want to integrate your health and fitness practice, improve slowly and work to become 1% better every single day. The number four thing you can do to integrate your health and fitness practice in your life is to tell somebody what you're up to. In my line of work, people are so secretive about the changes and progress that they're making for themselves, and I think this is a big mistake. I understand why you don't tell people you've started exercising. You want the results to speak for themselves. I even understand why you've gone gluten-free, started taking supplements, or even implemented a fast once a week. You don't want to be judged by your intentions. The proof is in the pudding, so to speak, and heck, who knows, at this point, you're not even sure your changes are going to work anyway. I get that. I really do. However, here's a counterpoint. The primary indication that a behavioral adaptation is going to stick for a person is social support. In the literature, this is true of heroin addiction, pornography addiction, alcoholism, dietary changes, and even exercise training. Not only, it seems, do we become what we consistently do, we also tend to work hard to meet the expectations of the world around us. In my life, I know this to be 100% true, as I've been a certified personal trainer for 15 years, and it's not out of the ordinary for me to share my workout, my fitness goals, and even my injuries and low points with my social support system. It's a part of who I am in their eyes, and therefore, it would be weird to them if I didn't talk about myself in that light. Similarly, this is a piece of integrity. How are you going to integrate your health and fitness practice in conversation with your children, your wife, your coworkers, your friends, and your business partners? If you're not going to integrate it at all, don't be surprised if your health and fitness practice lacks integrity. And while it's been my experience that our social support systems are usually resistant to our change as an individual, it is very infrequently the case that those consistent changes aren't met with admiration and even inspiration. Who knows? By integrating your health and fitness practice in your relationships, you might inspire some people to make progress for themselves as well, and then you'll get a taste of one of the addictive things that made me a trainer. That is, seeing my positive incremental progress create positive transformation in others. It feels really good to see that sort of thing like addictively good, so consider yourself warned. The number five thing I would recommend to help you integrate your health and fitness practice into your daily life is to seek professional support. No, this isn't a shameless plug for coaching. I do coach people. You know that. Fantastic. But in today's world, there are resources like this podcast and many others with a slightly different flavor that can help you move and grow in a positive direction, like the app we launched, Better Daily. I found that screen time was one of the things that was keeping people from integrating health and fitness into their daily life. So I wanted to find a way to make their screen time work for them rather than against them on that front. And boom, Better Daily was born. The reality is 
Living with integrity is difficult. In today's world, the average person has so many pieces of themselves that are very difficult to put together well. If you have powerful dreams that you want to see come to fruition in the next one, three, five, or maybe even ten years, then you know it makes sense to pursue those things without leaving any part of you behind. I hope you'll consider this conversation as a call to integrate your exercise, your nutrition, and your lifestyle habits into bringing out the best in you biologically, psychologically, and even spiritually. The world needs more people of integrity, and while nobody's perfect, I hope I can count you as one of those who's working hard to put it all together. This has been Alex Van Houten with Defining Dad Bod. Until next time, guys. Kick butt. Take names. The free, practical advice and conversations here remain unbought and unbiased thanks to the support of Better Daily. If this episode has been helpful to you, share it with someone in your life who you know it will benefit. Then subscribe to the podcast and leave us a raving review to tell others what value Defining Dad Bod has brought to your health and fitness journey. Finally, if you're struggling for betterment, don't do it alone. We all have a cross to carry, and it's lighter when we do it together. Go to definingdadbod.com slash better daily to get supported, challenged, and inspired to take yourself to the next level. Who knows who we could be if we could become 1% better every single day. Go to definingdadbod.com slash better daily today. That's definingdadbod.com slash better daily.